Yo, welcome to Cherokee Now. Today we have Kathy Littlejohn joining the show. Welcome to the show, Kathy. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about your work. Tell me what you've been working on lately. Well, I've been a Cherokee storyteller for years. And after I retired, I wanted to work on a different type of project. One, to preserve the stories, and two, to use social media as a different kind of outlet. And three, to tell the story and the history of any places where those stories took place. Okay. I love Cherokee history, um, but I realized that it's hard to find a yes. Cherokee history class that you could take for eight weeks at a time and then go out to these places. But everyone is interested in those Absolutely. places. So I thought, why not get videoed at the places tell the history and tell any stories. Let me ask you, let's step back a little bit. Where did you where did you get your knowledge from, your, your history of Cherokee? <laughs> Talking to people, <laughs> uh, going going out and visiting. Um, you have to make the time. Right. And that's not always easy when you're working full time, you have a family Absolutely. to take care of or someone else in your home that you have to take care of. So I started by going out to um, different classes. In okay. fact, I missed one um, that my sister got to take, and it, it disappointed me so much because I didn't know it was being offered. Oh, no. And I thought, why can't people, while they're waiting in the parking lot to pick up their children mm -hmm. from ball practice, do a five-minute history lesson, and then maybe they would say, "Let's w this weekend, let's take the kids and go there absolutely you know it's it's so close by and it's so important to do well absolutely and, and you're working kind of in my world now where we're trying to get these stories out and educate people and, okay. and get people excited about our culture and that's great to have uh, people like yourself out there that are, are moving into those areas of uh, social media and technology to get those stories you know taken down forever once we film them once we record them it's out there forever our, right. our kids can enjoy them and you're right exactly. when, when you're busy in your busy life which we all have um, it gives you an opportunity to, to review that and to, to be educated on that. Um, so tell me the name of the series. Cherokee History and Stories. What happened here? So what happened here? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, a few hundred feet from here, there was something really interesting that happened. Really? I don't know if I'll make a video of that or not. Well, that would be uh, good. Yeah. So there's what surprised me about the project. In my head, I just listed... 10 sites that I thought people would be interested in right. from from Cullowhee to Murphy. Okay. And then I realized I can't do it that way. I when we actually went out, my husband and I went out to find the sites first. We found 7 in Clay County alone. Oh, I got you. We didn't even get up to the gorge. Right. So there's so many sites that I was astonished wow so but that's a good thing it is it's a lot of history here right. there's a lot of a lot of stories to be told right um so what what did you what was one of the key things you discovered on your on your journey out here to get this story told this uh Cherokee history and stories what were one of the one of the coolest things that you've seen out there oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> i think quinasi mound uh-huh in the in the town of hayesville that was amazing wow that was truly amazing and to realize that when i had gone to softball games when my stepdaughter played i was sitting a hundred yards away from it and i didn't even know it was there the second well and i think meeting the people if it's on their property uh -huh. seeing how they passionately care for that gotcha and they love having people come and see it and they take the time to answer questions they were thrilled that we were filming absolutely they were really excited so let me ask you this there um you mentioned there were a number of things just in clay county right. how many things are around us right now in in, in our koala boundary that we don't necessarily, I guess that maybe we take for granted that we should be excited about. Are there a lot of events and, and locations here that we need to know about absolutely. historically? Oh, absolutely. It, I'll never go through the park again without thinking about a little fort called, they called it Fort Henry, okay. where the Thomas Legion was stationed. 
And I want people to know about that. Absolutely. So on their way to school clothes shopping, they can talk about it with their children. Absolutely. So, or like going down to a football game in Hayesville and then taking the time to stop by the Cherokee Historical Site that's right literally on the next road. Wow. Wow. So um, where can people find information about these stories? They're all on YouTube. Okay. And I hope it's easy. I tried to make it easy and simple as possible. Bear Allison was my videographer. Okay. And he put them up on YouTube. So if you type in, it will go to YouTube and then type in Cherokee History and Stories, what happened here. All 10 of them should pop up. Okay, great. Um, so tell me about how this came to be. You had approached the Cherokee Preservation Foundation. That's right. Okay. They thought it was a good idea. Um, they cautioned me they they only wanted to do 10 sites i wanted to do 30 <laughs> but they said let's start small mm -hmm. and and work up um which was probably pretty smart because right. it took longer than i thought it would and then they um channeled the money through the tribal historic preservation office and their staff was wonderful absolutely gave me a lot of assistance um and then basically it was me that chose the site and did the research on it and wrote i call them scripts right so i wrote the script and then and any stories that are associated with that place and then we my husband and i went out and found them wow um and th that was exciting that and is when fun. we found them that was really exciting and then bear came later with me and we filmed on the location Absolutely. or as close to the location as we could get Right. So, and he has a drone, uh -huh. so he could fly up and over, and see, and see the, the whole area, the layout yeah. of the land, and so everything. That wow. was amazing. So, um, who were some of the integral players in this that made this successful? Well, Bear certainly, um, and then Miranda Panther from okay. Tribal Historic Preservation Office, Russ Townsend. That's the wealth of knowledge there in THPO. Yes, absolutely, and then Tinker. Oh, gosh. Jinx is her maiden name. I'm sorry, <laughs> I just drew a blank on her married name. At the foundation. At the thing. foundation, okay. yeah. She's my project manager. And then Excellent. I think they just assigned Ashley Bachenbach right. to, to help tinker with, with this. I've met with them once. Good. So they they were excited about the project. They thought perhaps the marketing and or division of commerce might Absolutely. Look this, into as some I was getting ready to ask sites. with your with your permission. I mean, I'd love to run this series on Channel Twenty Eight so sure. that the public can see. You know, and maybe right here during this interview, actually show one of them. Uh, right. We'll cut that in now, okay. and then when we come back, you know, we'll talk um, a little bit about what's next. Sure. Shio, and welcome to Cherokee History and Stories. What happened here? My name is Kathy Littlejohn, and we've been exploring the Cherokee Valley towns historic sites, and telling stories associated with those places. Today, we are at present day Andrews, North Carolina, which Cherokee speakers still call Gunahidon. As you travel on US 74, you pass by Cherokee town sites like Dasidi, Tamatla, Little Teleco, and Gonasidon. In 1838, the U.S. military rounded up all the Cherokee living in these valley towns and held them here at Fort Delaney. Now the fort had a palisade, a blockhouse, officer's quarters, a hospital, and a blacksmith shop. About 1,500 Cherokee people came to Fort Delaney and then were forced on to Fort Butler in present-day Murphy, North Carolina. They stayed there some several days and some for weeks. And then the U.S. military moved them to Fort Cass in Charleston, Tennessee. From there, they were forced to remove and relocate to Indian Territory in present-day Oklahoma. Just off of 74, at the end of Locust Street, the North Carolina Trail of Tears Association has placed a historical marker talking about the removal and Fort Delaney. I can imagine as they left this beautiful area, to cheer themselves up, they told stories, stories like this one. Now close by Andrews, North Carolina, there was a mound a long time ago named Sitsi. 
And the people began hearing voices in the wind from the Noya Anaihi, the immortals, asking the Cherokee to come and live with them inside the mountain. They warned them that misfortune and great danger was coming, and they encouraged them to come and live with them. They told them that they must all gather in the townhouse. They needed to fast for seven days. And the most important thing was not to make a sound. The people did that. They all gathered together. Everyone fasted. Everyone stayed together. And on the seventh day, the immortals came. They came with a sound like a roaring thunderclap. And they picked up the townhouse, which scared some of the people, and they let out a scream. This startled the immortals, and they dropped one end of the townhouse, creating part of the mound of Sitsi. The rest was taken with them up to Lone Peak near the Chiawa, and they were turned to solid rock, keeping all of the Cherokee people inside safe. Thank you for joining me on Cherokee History and Stories. What happened here? All right, so what's next um, on your journey to, uh, to, tell, to continue to tell these stories? I still have to go out to the schools and the museums in Cherokee County and Clay County and, and Graham County and here, Gadua Academy, um, Swain and Jackson County, and let them know that the videos exist right. and that they can use them if they have a Cherokee history course or Cherokee history and culture special event. Um, maybe they might want to take a, tr a school trip, a field trip to right. some of the places. Right. So I, I still have to do that and then promote the 10 that I've done. Then I'm going to be asking for more funding to do as many as they'll let me. Absolutely. 10 or, or 20 more. Absolutely. And, and I think, you know, speaking to what you spoke to earlier about working with commerce and to try to, you know, turn right. these into look, not just for tourism. I know that's where we end mm -hmm. up with things, uh, you know, and bottom dollar is what drives us and, and drives our programming. But a lot of our locals need to know these places exist. A lot of I our agree. Cherokee people need to get excited about the history. And that's why I'm so excited hearing you tell the stories about you know, old forts or old burial locations or where yeah. events happened in our own town. Let's highlight that. Let's market that and, and, and not just to outsiders, but let's market it to our, our people here so we can instill that pride and instill that history that um, to reconnect us all back together that gives us that, that grounding that a lot of places don't have out here in the world. So that that's some great work that we've got to ahead of us that I look forward to. It's really a, a good experience for an individual or a family to to go there because not only do you learn the story, you actually see where something happened, but you can feel things there. That was exciting to me. Yeah. It was just a real special feeling. Yeah. Um, I will say this about one man in Hayesville at Fort Hembry. Um, he's so proud that he's the property owner and he takes really good care of, oh, good. of, of things there. And he gave us a little tour and showed us where things were, were at, the, at the old fort. And, but then when he started talking about the stockades, he said, if you just go right over my bank, anytime I'm working down in there, he said, I think about, I think about your people. I think about them being locked up here yeah. and he started crying and i started <laughs> crying and oh. <laughs> you know here we are 180 yeah. years later yeah. but it's so moving right. to see that it happened right, right. there yeah. and then to know other sad things and and but good things too that was one of the highest death rates at any of the forts oh, and wow. there's a number of reasons but they don't know for sure why, right. but there's a couple of reasons that could have happened that way. And then he ended up by saying, and I had the nicest group that came from Japan the other day to, to see wow. this. And I thought, 
we don't even come from Big Cove to see it, and they came from Japan. Yeah. So we we, need we have to get a lot busy. of work to do. We have we? a lot of work to do. We do, and and, and I think it's about and it's something we're going to try to instill is uh, to identify our responsibility. And right. I say our because every one of us have a responsibility. Absolutely. Uh, that we got we have to give back to to honor our ancestors, to honor the traditions and the culture right. that we've established and enabled us to be here for all these millennia. That's because right. uh, you know we get hung up on trail of tears, and I know that's a. A, a, a very traumatic event. It's a very uh, finite event, though. We have so many thousands of other so events happen things. here that right. we need to continue to highlight, and, and and a lot of success. There are things we can build on um, that that are exciting. So I look forward Thank to seeing the rest of this series, and we'll uh, dedicate our time to help you in any capacity that you need Thank as well. You. Thank you so right. much. Well, that'll be it for today. Uh, if you're listening at home and would like to comment on the show or ask questions regarding what we've discussed today, uh, please comment on our EBCI Cherokee Now Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Cherokee Now. We'll see you again soon. Data Dog, I hung you.